Having immunity against SARS-CoV-2 provides protection for people if they were to get exposed to the virus in the future. Now, a big study out of Sweden looks at the likelihood of a person getting long COVID, chronic disease, after catching the virus in people who were vaccinated compared to people who were not. So let's talk about it. Hey everybody, it's Dr. David. So with my ongoing push to educate not just myself, but everybody else, as more and more research has been coming in about not just COVID, but all other types of things related to our health, education, and the choices that we can make in terms of how we deal with them, um, has always been a big part of what I'm trying to do here. Okay, And I realize that sometimes I take stances that are more popular, less popular, but I realize most of the time that I also take a stance that gets people on both sides kind of agreeing with what I'm saying, but also somewhat not agreeing and really depends on the particular issue. That's one of the reasons why I have this channel is to provide information to you so that you can also make the best decision for yourself and for your family. Okay. Now, when it comes to SARS-CoV-2, the virus that caused COVID, that causes COVID, at first, of course, when we first started learning about this in the early part of 2020, the big concern was all the hospitalizations and the deaths that were being seen from this virus, right? And let's face it, in those early few months, especially up in New York and other areas, things were bad, okay? Now, then, of course, um, concern started to develop over people who survived COVID, whether it was a hospitalization or even a mild course, but then going on to having more long-term symptoms, what people call long COVID. Um, and that was something that, again, as a medical profession, we hadn't really thought much about relative to COVID. Those of us in the know when it comes to having um, chronic fatigue syndrome and other autoimmune diseases that are being triggered by viruses, we knew that this thing could happen in a way long COVID kind of confirmed for us that for many types of infections, it's not just a quick one and done for some people. For some people, it can have long-term effects. Okay. Now, of course, that's what we call long COVID. It's also referred to as post-COVID-19 conditions or PCC, okay? And, and the types of symptoms that have been seen for that include things like prolonged dizziness, chronic pain, um, brain fog, lack of concentration, loss of smell, loss of taste, shortness of breath, chest pain, um, new onset of debilitating anxiety, um, um, POTS, postural um, orthostatic um, tachycardia syndrome, um, chronic headaches. So a lot of really debating, debilitating things that people have been suffering for months, if not years, since their first infection. Okay. Now, of course, all the while, after the vaccine first was introduced in the winter of 2020, 2021, and most people were being, um, if they were going to choose a vaccine, they were starting to do that come springtime into the summer of, 20, of 2021. Um, and of course, with that, we started hearing about side effects of the vaccines. Many people had no problems whatsoever. I've talked openly about I had no problems and nobody in my family has had any problems with it either. But there have been people who have had serious problems, people who have had myocarditis, pericarditis. Um, again, um, POTS, the postural orthodontic hypertension that I've talked about can happen both from the wild virus as well as from the vaccine. Um, and so these are serious concerns also. And, you know, let's face it, if you have a negative reaction to a vaccine or do terribly with the vaccine, with the virus itself, you're probably going to, or people, you know, for that matter, you're probably going to have your own opinions about everything going forward. Okay. Now, at this point, 70% of Americans are considered fully vaccinated against COVID. Also, 94% of people have been estimated to have the natural virus at least one time already. Okay. Um, and of course, um, with this um, natural and this big time natural immunity that we have, the concerns about severe disease hospitalization, hospitalizations and death, while they can still look, occur, have significantly gone down both in terms of the incidence as well as the concern, because, of course, if we're not seeing as much, people wouldn't be as concerned about it. That's just obviously a natural progression. OK, now, as of this recording in December 2023, it is felt that 96 percent of all people in America have at least some part of immunity, some form of immunity against the virus SARS-CoV-2. OK, and of course, that means for protection later on. OK, now. Of course, with this a level of immunity that we have as a whole, the herd immunity, that's the reason why the pandemic was declared over. And we've moved into this more endemic phase where there will be, there will be COVID around. 
and um, it'll probably be around for a very long time. But obviously, our medical systems, we now know how to handle this virus much better. We know, um, obviously, those of us who know about vitamin D and zinc and the immune protocols and the taking of vitamin A and all the things that I've advocated, uh, we now know better how to um, treat this as well, naturally, as well as pharmaceutically as well, for that matter. Um, and of course, that's all good knowledge and gives us all a sense of relief. Now, this study now that I'm referring to, 600,000 people from Sweden were studied. And it was in one of the bigger journals of the world, the British Medical Journal. Yes, it was in the, the research was in Sweden, but the journal itself is, is out of, out of uh, Great Britain. And they looked at people who first developed COVID-19 between December, 7, uh, December 27th, 2020, and February 9th, 2022. And these were looking at the, in the two largest regions in Sweden. OK, and we've t and we've talked before about how Sweden has taken some different approaches to um, co then COVID than other places in Europe and certainly here in America. Um, but of those um, 600,000 people, about 300,000 of them were people who first had been vaccinated and 300,000 people who had not been vaccinated before they were infected by COVID to be enrolled into the study. OK, now as for what they were actually looking at, so individuals first, they were followed from the first moment of their infection or first logging of their infection, I should say, um, until either they died, they emigrated out of Sweden because their national system um, wouldn't be covering or wouldn't be tracking them anymore, whether they were vaccinated, whether they were reinfected um, or if they have a long COVID diagnosis. OK, um, um, or or also when all of the data had been completed at the end of the uh, of the study period there. OK, so there were a lot of different reasons why people were. Um, but again, you, you first got into it by getting infected. And then one of those other things had to happen for you to be said, OK, you now have a um, you now have a final a finality data point for yourself or for that individual, I should say. OK, now. The individuals themselves who had received at least one dose of COVID-19 vaccine, OK, um, before they were uh, now, if they had even one dose, I should say, that means that they were considered vaccinated. So um, that so that was the first thing to look at people who had received at least one vaccine versus people who had no vaccines who then got COVID. Did they go on to get long COVID? OK, now. As far as this is concerned, you know, long COVID itself, um, can, the, as we're talking about, can be very debilitating. But what they found was of the 300,000 people who were vaccinated, 0.4% um, had then went on to have a diagnosis of long COVID. Whereas people who had never received any vaccine who then caught COVID, 1.4%, more than three times the likelihood of developing long COVID if a person was not vaccinated first, okay? And in that study, um, basically, that's like, um, as I said, a threefold increase, more than that, actually. So of the people who are vaccinated, um, 21,000 of them had, had only one dose, 205,000 of them had two doses, and another 73,000 had... Um, um, had had three or more doses. So it was one versus two versus three or more. Okay. And here's the interesting thing about this. Okay. So of people who had one dose of the vaccine, it decreased compared to a person who was not vaccinated. It decreased the chances of developing long COVID by 21%. If they had two doses, it reduced the chance of developing long COVID by 59%. And if they had three or more doses, then it was actually reduced by 73%. In other words, if a person, the more, more doses of the vaccine that a person were to have and then catch COVID, the more likely that they would then be protected and not develop long COVID. And 73% of people who, were, who had received three or more, again, showed that they didn't get long COVID, which is obviously a large percentage. Um, I shouldn't say 73%, 73% reduction is what I meant to say. Excuse me. Okay, so really, the more this at least this study here showed, the more vaccinated, the more protected you were against long COVID. Okay, now I will point out that there has not been any research, and I scoured to looking for this, but there's been no research that looks at how protected a person is against developing long COVID if they had the natural disease itself compared to somebody um, um, who um, is catching it for the first time. Okay, and I think that would be important research to know because yes, we are seeing that um, the, the vaccine, at least in this study, 
showed protection against it, but it would be kind of nice to know how much of a reduction compared to people when they get COVID the very first time, that having COVID once already, considering that most people have had it, you know, how likely are they going to then go on to have a problem with long COVID after that? And we just don't know because that research hasn't been done. And kind of unfortunate because obviously if they were able to do this type of research on the vaccinated versus the non-vaccinated population, they could have done a research, or I guess they still could, for the the, the non-vaccinated person, chances of catching low, um, long COVID with having their first infection versus having the immunity from the first infection and then after their second infection. So do this information, whatever you want. Have a nice day.